So far we have explored how valence bond theory explains chemical bonding through the overlap of atomic orbitals, right? Basically atomic orbitals are regions of space that electrons occupy and by overlapping atomic orbitals we get a bond. Now while VB theory does give us a good understanding of bond formation, it does have its limitations especially when we are talking about predicting the geometry of molecules. You see, molecules often do not give the shape or geometry that we would expect them to have based on the simple concept of overlapping of atomic orbitals and that is actually a serious limitation. So what do we do? Do we just throw the VB theory out of the window because it cannot predict the geometry? Not really but we do need some modifications around it and that's exactly what hybridization does. By mixing atomic orbitals and by forming new hybrid orbitals that are most suitable for bonding, we can accurately predict the shape and geometry of different molecules. So let's explore that in this video. Let's take the example of ammonia. In ammonia, nitrogen is the central atom and the electronic configuration of nitrogen is 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. In the ground state, a nitrogen atom has 5 valence electrons. 2 in the 2s orbital and 3 electrons in the 2p orbitals. But the thing is that the 2s and the 2p orbitals have different spatial orientations and also have different energies. You see, the 2s orbital is spherical in shape and is uniformly spread around the nucleus. But what about the 2p orbitals? They look nothing like the 2s orbitals, right? They are dumbbell in shape and are oriented along the x, y and the z axis. But that's not all. These orbitals also differ in their energy. 2s orbitals are closer to the nucleus and therefore are lower in energy than the 2p orbitals. So this is what the 2s and 2p orbitals of a nitrogen atom look like. Now based on the valence bond theory where we say that bonds are formed by the overlapping of atomic orbitals, how do you think the bonds would form here in the case of ammonia? So here we have 3 unpaired electrons in the 2p orbitals of a nitrogen atom that can overlap with the 1s electrons of 3 hydrogen atoms, correct? That way we would get 3 NH bonds and if that were to happen, we would get something like this where you can see that the 1s electrons from 3 hydrogen atoms have paired with the unpaired electrons of the 2p orbitals. So this is how the bond formation would happen based on the orbital overlap concept. But here's the interesting thing. You see the 2p orbitals of nitrogen are all oriented at 90 degrees from each other. And when these 2p orbitals combine with the 1s orbitals of hydrogen atom, we would predict the geometry of ammonia to be in such a way that the H, N, H bond should be around 90 degrees because the 2p orbitals are all along the different axes that are at 90 degrees from each other and the 1s orbitals of hydrogen atoms are overlapping with these 2p orbitals. But the problem is that in reality the bond angle of ammonia is around 107 degrees and not 90 degrees. Now just as we discussed in the case of ammonia, if you extend this orbital overlap concept to other molecules like methane or water, you will find that VB theory cannot accurately predict the geometry of these molecules. The experimentally obtained bond angle is not the same as that we would get using the orbital overlap concept. So clearly you can see how the simple orbital overlap model of VB theory is grossly insufficient, right? And that is when Linus Pauling and others introduce the concept of hybridization. Hybridization is basically the mixing of atomic orbitals of slightly different energies to form a new set of hybrid orbitals that are of the same orientation and energy. Now remember folks the atomic orbitals should be only slightly differing in energy. I mean you cannot have a 2s orbital mixing with a 3p or a 3d orbitals where there is a substantial difference in their energies, right? So the atomic orbitals that are mixing should be slightly different in energy and then we would get a new set of hybrid orbitals which are of the same orientation and energy. Now in the case of ammonia, the 2s and the 3 2p orbitals would hybridize to form 4 identical equivalent sp3 hybrid orbitals. Let me remove these definitions and stuff. Yeah, so here we are. The 2s and the 3 2p orbitals would mix up and hybridize to form 
four equivalent sp3 hybrid orbitals how do we get four because we have one 2s and three 2p orbitals mixing so the number of hybrid orbitals formed would be the same as the number of orbitals that are mixing simple right i mean all of it looks so difficult at first how did we get sp3 but it's straightforward one 2s orbital combines with three 2p orbitals and we end up getting four sp3 hybrid orbitals so let's take a moment and understand what is happening here you see we started with 2s and 2p orbitals that have different shapes different energies but after hybridization we end up with four identical equivalent sp3 hybrid orbitals that have the same energy and shape and these hybrid orbitals would take up a tetrahedral geometry in space and the bond angle between these would be 109.5 degrees so this is because the orbitals arrange themselves in such a way as to have the least amount of repulsion between them and this is assuming that each sp3 hybrid orbital contains at least one electron either as a part of the bonding pair of electrons or as a part of the lone pair of electrons i mean think about like four points in a sphere and arrange them in such a way that they are as far away from each other as possible and if we do that we would end up with a tetrahedral geometry like this so now that the hybrid orbitals are ready let's start filling these orbitals with our electrons okay so we have three unpaired electrons and one hybrid orbital has a paired electron correct now these three unpaired electrons of a nitrogen atom can combine with one s electrons of three hydrogen atoms so that would be something like this where we are combining it with the one s electrons of three hydrogen atoms you can see how three nh bonds are formed by the pairing of electrons like this okay wow this looks great but let's not forget that we have a lone pair of electrons in one of the sp3 hybrid orbitals now the question is how significant is that well we definitely cannot ignore this because even though the lone pair of electrons do not form a bond with a hydrogen atom they still influence the shape of the molecule you see even though our hybrid orbitals are arranged in a perfect tetrahedral structure and ideally a tetrahedral arrangement would have 109.5 degrees as the bond angle the hnh bond angle in ammonia is actually not 109.5 degrees it's actually lesser and that is because of the presence of this notorious lone pair of electrons so let's simplify this arrangement and look at this here we have three nh bonds and a lone pair of electrons now because the lone pair repulsions are much stronger than the repulsions between the bond pair of electrons these lone pairs tend to occupy a larger space and would force the bonds to squeeze inward and as a result the bond angle the hnh bond angle would decrease to 107 degrees instead of 109.5 degrees of a perfect tetrahedral arrangement remember at the end of the day the molecules would eventually want to adopt a particular configuration where it has the most stability and decrease the amount of repulsion between its electron pairs it can be lone pair of electrons or bonding pair of electrons but the most important thing is that the molecules would always tend to take up that particular configuration where the electron repulsions are the lowest now remember folks the electronic arrangement in ammonia would be tetrahedral because here we do take into consideration all the electron pairs the bonding pair of electrons and the lone pair of electrons however the molecular geometry would be trigonal pyramidal here we are only looking at how the atoms are arranged in space and we would not be taking into consideration the presence of lone pair now before we wrap up this video let's quickly discuss one more example let's look at water a favorite solvent the universal solvent right now in water oxygen is the central atom it has six valence electrons 2s2 2p4 and here again one 2s and three 2p orbitals would hybridize to give us four sp3 hybrid orbitals it is the same number of orbitals that are combining one 2s and three 2p orbitals and therefore we would get the same hybrid orbitals four sp3 hybrid orbitals on filling the electrons we can see that we have two unpaired electrons here and two of the sp3 orbitals have a paired electron or a lone pair of electrons so since we have two unpaired electrons 
1 is electrons of 2 hydrogen atoms can combine with this and form 2 OH bonds, correct? Alright, the pairing electron is not clear here, so let me draw that again. So, if we redraw this entire arrangement, we would get something like this. We can see we have 2 OH bonds and 2 lone pair of electrons, right? So, let's pause here for a moment. In the previous case, we saw nitrogen of ammonia had one lone pair of electron and it significantly affected our bond angle. Now here, we have two lone pair of electrons. So what do you think would be happening here? Definitely the bond angle here would not be 109.5 degrees of a perfect tetrahedral arrangement, right? In a perfect tetrahedral arrangement, the bond angle is 109.5 degrees. Now, in ammonia, we had one lone pair of electrons and this lone pair of electrons did manage to decrease or squeeze in the bond angle to 107 degrees. Now, what about water? In water, we have two lone pair of electrons. That means, these lone pair of electrons would occupy a much larger space and would decrease this bond angle even further. So, here, in this case, the bond angle would decrease to 104.5 degrees. So, to conclude, we can see that the 2s and 2p orbitals would combine to give us 4 sp3 hybrid orbitals. That means, the electronic geometry in all of them would be the same, which is tetrahedral, but the shape of the molecules would get significantly affected by the presence of lone pair of electrons. In ammonia, the shape was trigonal pyramidal. In water, the shape would be V-shape or bent shape. So, I hope now you are convinced how hybridization does a much better job of explaining the geometry of different molecules and how it is a lot more complicated than just simple atomic orbital overlap, right? Now, in addition to all this, hybridization also explains why some elements form more bonds than what would be expected from their valence electronic configuration. So, let's learn about that in our next video.